What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to my Monday Night Raw reactions for the week of August the 15th, 2016. As always, let me know what you thought down in the comments below of this episode of Raw, and I'll get into my long and rambling, or hopefully short and rambling, thoughts on this episode, which is the Go Home Show, the last Raw before SummerSlam 2016. We begin the show with, earlier today, Seth Rollins uh, is looking for the Demon King. Tonight, he's going to call out the Demon King. So... The one thing here that was hilarious, listen closely to this earlier today with Seth Rollins. Listen to how he is outside, but somehow there's an echo as he's talking. There's no echo outside. Like, he recorded this thing outside and then recorded the audio for it inside somewhere else later. Just one of those things as someone who does YouTube videos and has done a lot of audio work can tell that's not the same audio from when he recorded that. Because there's like no wind, what the hell? Anyway, we open our show proper with Rusev in the ring, who's pissed off, wants an apology from Roman Reigns, hijacking the show, not going to leave until he gets that apology. Out comes Mick Foley, who's like, get the fuck out of here. And Rusev's like, you know how I said you were the greatest GM in the world? I lied. And then Foley calls out Steph, or I guess they both call out Steph. And Steph comes out, um, and Steph's... Kind of just the Steph thing where she has to get over at all costs. Like, is she a heel? Is she a face? I don't know. Rusev teases kind of jumping to SmackDown, uh, which is weird. I didn't, th I didn't think you could do that. But, but you know, he's, he's kind of like, well, I'll call little Daniel and Shane. Uh, and then out comes Roman Reigns to a, c a couple of boos. A couple of boos. A couple of boos. Um, got rid of the big beard, which is like, what? That actually, like, didn't look bad. And now he's just back to the little goatee. So, anyway... They set up for a main event match tonight, uh, uh, as Rusev is defending the honor of Lana and Man. Talk about imitating the goddamn video game. You're having a match on Raw when you're having a match at the pay-per-view in the same week. That shit is dumb. It's dumb. I mean, it makes sense in some ways and makes no sense in others. I'll get into that when I cover the main event. First match of the evening is Sheamus versus Sami Zayn. You had Cesaro on commentary, as apparently we're going with this ongoing Sheamus and Cesaro feud. Uh, you had Michael Cole botch uh, the name of the Blue Thunderbomb, called it the Michinoku Driver. It happens. Um, and at the end, you had Cesaro come down and uh, briefly interfere and cost Sheamus the match. Therefore, Sami Zayn, who wasn't even on Raw last week, and I was like, what the fuck, Sami Zayn, got a win over Sheamus on Raw. So, that moves on to Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens, Jericho, backstage cutting a pretty good promo, Keep kept calling Tom Phillips the wrong name, really funny. Um, then we get Sheamus and Cesaro backstage, I guess in a different backstage area, or perhaps this was before or after a commercial, I, I can't recall. Um, really getting into it, and then Foley is like, you know what, Just gets in the middle of them, is like, fuck you both. We're going to have a best of seven between these two, and it's going to start at SummerSlam. And that whole thing feels like the WWE being like, you know what, all you internet nerds who complain about 50-50 booking, we're going to have these same guys, the same two guys, fight seven times because fuck you. Like, that's insane. Now, obviously, best of seven means that, you know, that's five times uh, or four times. Either way, best of seven, uh, and that's, you know, like, look, they were going to have him fight all the time anyway, so why not make it into a thing, right? I don't know, that just felt weird. Anyway, we had those damn Dudleys fighting the New Day, uh, and there was a thing with Doc Gallows and, and or, I'm sorry, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson with, with the eggs again as their doctors, but where the hell is their fucking stethoscopes? Come on, do, do, do the work. Um, and the New Day wins here because there's the distractions with the, like, non... The, there's something going on with the Dudleys. Whether or not that turns into a story or not, I don't know. But uh, second week in a row, there's some miscommunication. Uh, and they go backstage with Seth Rollins, who's still looking for the Demon King, and he asked Neville, and Neville's like, you don't even understand. You don't even get it. Um, and then it is time... For your weekly enhancement talent match, uh, it is Nia Jax this week. Last week was Braun Strowman. This week is Nia Jax. 
who fights some jobber with bl blue hair and squishes are good. Uh, then we move on to uh, Barack Lesnar, Paul Heyman, uh, in what was quite possibly my favorite segment of the evening because out comes the one man band, baby! Heath Slater, who's like, look, I'm out here to fight Brock Lesnar in order to get a contract for Raw, and I'm doing it for my kids. And Lesnar's like, I don't give a shit about your kids. It was real good. And then just, you know, a couple of Germans and an F5, and that's it for Heath Slater. But that was fun. That was better than the usual Paul Heyman just running down the thing for like 10 minutes. So I enjoyed that um, for what it was. Now, hopefully, that means you won't see Slater on SmackDown to, to sell those injuries. Because, come on, you should be. Anyway, next up we have Enzo. I'm, I'm sorry, not Enzo. Big Cass with Enzo in his corner versus Kevin Owens with Chris Jericho in his corner. This match ended in a disqualification. There was a post-match brawl afterwards, and that kind of was what it was. So, we go backstage, and these two are having a little bit of a brawl, uh, Rusev and Roman Reigns, and that was, you know, all right. It was a nice setup for your main event. Uh, and then, in the, one of the most baffling things of the evening, we have the reunited primetime players with Bob Backlund. And they're fighting the Shining Stars, and they're reuniting for one night only. But then Titus turns on Darren Young, gives him the Clash of the Titus, and then leaves. And again, uh, the Shining Stars picking up the victory on some bullshit. Like, that seems to be the only time they actually win anything, is because some, some bullshit happens. Anyway, are they turning Titus heel? Darren heel? Anybody's... I don't know. What's going on with this? Like, what, what is the point of this? What, what's the end game? I have no fucking idea. Anyway, speaking of 3MB, we have Ginger Mahal actually having a match on Raw versus Neville. And it feels like Neville's in a holding pattern until they actually debut the Cruiserweight division on Raw, because certainly he'd be a good fit for that. But right now, he's just kind of spinning his wheels, just having random-ass matches. And certainly... Jinder Mahal getting in more offense than, you know, the average jobber would. But, as I've been saying, since he came back, uh, it's only a matter of time before Braun Strowman squishes him good. And speaking of which, much like Nia Jax last week got a, just a video package, Braun Strowman got a video package. And the highlight of that video package? Braun! That's the only good part of his whole fucking character is that fucking theme song. Anyway, next up, oh, we went backstage with Foley and Steph saying, hey... Special guest, Jon Stewart. So, here's the question. Will Jon Stewart cost Cena his match against AJ Styles? Is that going to happen? That, that'd be funny. Um, and then Seth Rollins, still looking for the Demon King. Like, hey, Seth, go look in the ring for the, for the Demon King. So, he does. And we have a Seth Rollins promo, uh, which was interrupted by some idiotic fan trying to get into the ring. Now, I've heard... On other parts of the internet, that he was just that that this dude was like legit crazy before the show, just ranting and raving outside about weird religious stuff, and he wanted to get in the ring to fight Seth Rollins. And personally, it just makes me wish it was still the '90s or the '80s or the '70s. And it's a matter of you don't get in the ring with a professional athlete because back in the day, you did that they would legit beat the fuck out of you because there was an understanding. If you're coming to pay to see the show, you're paying to see the show. Do not interrupt. But these days, in 2016, everyone is so fucking scared of lawsuits. They're so scared of lawsuits that the performers won't ever justifiably attack these fans who think it is smart enough to get in the ring with someone who is, you know, six foot, 200, whatever. Um, but in the old days, they would just get beat in the face. Go look it up on YouTube. Good stuff. Anyway, he calls out the Demon King, who does come out. And he's got, like, writing all over his body that says, like, Demon King and, and Finn Balor and whatever. And all I can think of is that the episode of The Simpsons, uh, Treehouse of Horror. No beer and no TV make Homer something something. Like, that's all I can think of. Um, so, that was alright. I'm thinking that the only reason they, they did this, to have his just kind of regular demon thing debut on Raw was because he's going to go bigger and crazier for SummerSlam. That's the only thing I could think of. Anyway, um, they get into it a little bit, and that's kind of the end of that segment. Obviously, Finn Balor uh, comes out on top 
Superman Punch of that segment. Anyhow, who? Speaking of weird tag teams, I guess we have the Golden Truth, and they're fighting the club, and that match was kind of whatever. The club wins, and then out comes the New Day, and they try to uh, use Francesca to hit uh, Anderson in the balls. That, that, is, that doesn't happen. Um, so that was kind of, you know, that's the end of that build-up, because they're all going to fight on on Sunday. And shh, my early prediction, even though this isn't a predictions video, I bet you Big E will be there at SummerSlam. That just makes sense. Anyway, uh, we get a backstage thing with Charlotte and Dana Brooke talking about how, you know, Dana is a disappointment and screw her on my own fighting Alicia Fox. And so, Charlotte comes out to fight Alicia Fox and handily beats Alicia Fox. On commentary was Sasha Banks and uh, afterwards she just comes down to the ring there to confront Charlotte and sure enough, uh, Dana Brooke pulling her bullshit and it's a two-on-one attack Etc. Etc. Fun fact: Alicia Fox is the most tenured woman on the roster. She is the head of the female roster because she's been there like fucking seven or eight years. It's crazy. She was the wedding planner for Edge and Vicky. That's how long she's been there. Anyway, main event time: Rusev and Roman Reigns. And there is some controversy, or at least on the internet, there is some controversy uh, this morning about. Editing and messing with the audio in adding in some Roman Reigns cheering and turning down the booze, which they tend to do a lot. Um, and after a commercial break, coming back where perhaps Rusev thought they were still on a commercial break and being like, I knew out here all you Russian wannabes, Bulgarian wannabes, implying that the crowd was cheering for Rusev that whole time, even though you couldn't hear that because perhaps they were tuning it out. So I guess the big question is here, A, why is this match happening on Raw when you're going to have it at pay-per-view? Well, A, you give Roman the win here so that he will lose at SummerSlam, only because you think that, hey, they're still on this big Roman Reigns push, therefore, you're going to have him fight whoever wins the Universal Championship at SummerSlam, so there's no point in giving him the U.S. title. That's, in my head, that, that, that makes the most sense. So, obviously, Roman wins here, and that's kind of, you know, the end of Raw. So, that being said, I will have more thoughts on all that possibilities for SummerSlam in my SummerSlam predictions video going up on Friday evening around 7 p.m.-ish, so I guess look forward to that. I'm a tax slug. This was my Raw reaction. Let me know what you thought. So, that being said, thanks for watching. More videos every day, and I'll see you next time right here on this channel. The big dog won, and I'm out.